Hello and welcome to Playing with Prologue. This week, me and Anne are going to look at the debugger. So, hi Anne. Hey Sam. Great. Let's learn about the debugger. Okay, so this is the, the program that we're going to debug. So I see that there's actually a bug in this program. Um, what we have is three predicates, um, my member or five, my test, and some useful info. My member or five is going to succeed when the first argument is either five or is a member of the list, which is the second argument. So we're going to invoke the query um, of the predicate my member or five with the first argument five and the second argument of the list one, two, or three. So now that we have the trace mode turned on, this will bring up the debugger and we'll be able to um, step through the code and see what the problem was. So this time I've gone into the debugger and you can see that we've got green and that means that we've succeeded at this stage. And we want to go into this predicate, so we're going to press space, which is for creep. You can also press C. And you can see as I do this, it brings up the course. And we can see the bindings of the arguments. So in this case, x is equal to 5 and the rest is equal to 2, 3. So when I going to try and skip on and try and find the bug. So we're going to press S for skip. And we find that it's gone pink, which means that the in somewhere inside this call to this predicate, we've had a failure. So let's try and find out where it is. And we're going to press R for redo. So we're back here. I'm going to creep this time. So I'm going to press space. And I'm going to press space again to use creep into this. So we're now calling this with rest. You can see the binding is now the empty list at this stage. <clears throat> I'm going to press creep one more time. And we've now jumped onto the third clause of the my member or five predicate. So this wants to jump into my test. So I'm going to press creep again. And this time we've got a failure. Now in this case, we know that this is the, the end of this um, chain of predicate calls. So we know that this must be the, the problem. So we look at the my test and we see that it's six, not five. <coughs> And so we need to change that. <coughs> so I'm going to press E for edit. Then I can go down here. Change my code. Save it. Compile. And the really neat thing about Prolog is that we've compiled it, but our core stack is exactly the same. So now when we redo, we jump straight to exactly where we were when we had the problem. And this time, because it's green, we know that this has succeeded. And we just exit out of all our call stack and we see that our program has returned true and succeeded. I've returned the program to its original state and we're just going to look at some of the other keys that we can do for debugging. So we have our predicate, my member or five, and we're invoking Turn off the trace mode. The way I do that is to type no debug. And then we're back to the normal command prompt that we have in Prolog. Now, one feature that we can do is to set a spy point on a particular predicate. And this means that when we run our query, the query will run up until that spy point is called. And we will then jump into the debugger at that point. So we do that with spy, and we're going to put my test. And that has succeeded with putting the spy point on that. And we've gone into debug, debug mode. Now, if we go back to calling our original query, We press return. Made a mistake. 
and you can see that we've jumped to my test which is where we have the spy point and you can see that that is indicated on the left hand side now we're just going to press F to finish our computation we press that on each level we come out back with true Okay, so if we've got a spy point and we want to remove it, then we need to type no spy and then the predicate that we want to remove from the spy list. And we get the, the it succeeded the spy point removed from my test. The other predicate is no spy all, and that will remove all of your spy points in one go. So we're back in the tracer, and I'm going to just show you another useful feature of debugging in. Prologue, and that's the fact that you can break out of your program and query um, in another level. So we're here and we're going to create, and we think, oh, I need to know something about my program. So I'm going to press B to break, and this brings me onto a level over here. Now, I don't want to be debugging on the second level, so I'm just going to turn debug off. Now I'm going to query for some useful info. So And we get the answer, some information. And now I want to go back to my debugging, so I'm going to press Control D. And I'm back into my debugger. I'm going to carry on here, space, I'm going to press F to finish and go out. And now I'm back. True. So, Anne, what do all these things in the top right, this cool stack, what does that mean? Okay, so here's a little program I've got. One thing that's ve that I find very confusing about this call stack, um, it of course just shows you the call stack, but um, it'll only show you a certain number of elements. And if you you can use these two buttons, these select parent frame, to go back up and see what's in the parent frame, or you can click on them. But this is frame eight, and there actually was. Um, that's as far up as this one happens to go. But if you have a lot of these, um, you can, uh, uh, it'll only show a certain number. You can use select parent frame and select child frame to move up and down beyond what's shown on the stack. Um, here, we have a choice point. Uh, this, this semicolon it's going to give us a choice point. And then we had two other choice points before it. Um, so we're stopped at a choice point here because of the semicolon. And then uh, before it, we had two other choice points in this predicate because there are two betweens in it. And, of course, the betweens generate a lot of choice points. So... Um, that's why we've got this, these um, arrows off to the side. When you have arrows here on the left that go back up, uh, that's uh, indicating that um, optimization knows that, that's, that it's going to return possibly many stack frame. Okay, so hopefully that's been a, a nice little introduction to the debugger. Um, thanks for playing with Prolog. So this week we've uh, learned a little bit about the debugger and we'll see you next week on playing with Prolog.